Hi everyone, um, today we're going to finish uh, chapter 15, Ideal Gases. We're going to have uh, a look at the last uh, three learning outcomes. Um, the idea that this whole topic was designed for ideal gases, um, we looked at how pressure, volume, temperature, so the macroscopic properties could be linked to microscopic properties. And with this last topic that we're going to look at today, we're going to link the average kinetic energy of particles in a gas to its absolute temperature. Um, so we will be introducing uh, Boltzmann's constant, <clears throat> which is made from two other constants. And then uh, we'll see the equations and how one, uh, how two equations can be used to derive another one. So um, starting first with uh, Boltzmann's constant. Um, Ludwig Boltzmann was a uh, quite good uh, physicist um, that helped uh, with um, relating the macroscopic properties of gases to like temperature and pressure uh, to microscopic properties of particles. Um, so they basically named this constant after him uh, out of respect. So we have um, two constants that we already know that make up uh, Boltzmann's constant. This is the molar uh, mass uh, constant uh, divided by Avogadro constant. And you get this value. This will be given to you as a constant in the um, formula booklet. <clears throat> so we already know that PV is equal to nRT. And we also know that PV is equal to... Um, actually, sorry, we already know that K is equal to... R over NA. So I need to show that this can be rewritten as this, and you should be able to do that in the exam. It is part of the requirement. Um, so what's common between the two, what, what's common between this expression and this one is R, so the molar uh, gas constant. So I will rearrange this equation. Let me call it one and two. So we rearrange uh, equation two to make R the subject of the formula. And then I will simply substitute R into equation one. So PV is equal to N K N A, just replaced R in there, times temperature. Um, we know that N and N A can be combined together because we know that the number of uh, particles in a substance is equal to the a number of moles times Avogadro constant. So I can replace N and A with just simply N, which will lead to PV is equal to NKT. So we simply prove this equation. Um, what the two equations have uh, as a difference, so let me name this equation three. What well, one and three have a uh, difference between each other is that one, you can use it to calculate a number of moles using um, the molar gas constant uh, PV and T. And for this one, you can calculate the number of particles, whether it's um, atoms or molecules. So here we have a quick example. It gives me the volume. Uh, on a typical atmospheric pressure, so it gives you the pressure, it gives you the temperature we need, you need to change into Kelvin, because it's always in Kelvin, remember that is the um, base unit, and it's not the change in temperature like we mentioned in chapter four, 14, so be careful with that. Um, calculate the number of particles, here it is, N, of gas, and the number of moles of gas inside the classroom. So I could use both equations. I could simply use one and then um, use the other one as well. So we have PV is equal to NKT. I rearrange for the number of particles. Put the numbers in. It's in meters cubed, so I don't need to change that. This is in kilopascals, so I need to change it into pascals. And I uh, use the constant uh, 
k which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times 293 which gives us 1.49 times 10 to the 28 particles remember it doesn't have units because we're counting the number of particles now if i want to calculate the number of moles i know that n is equal to n and a or i could have used uh, pv is equal to n r t and we arranged for n but it depends on you which one you want to use um this is this does the same exact thing um in, and instead of you having to put too many numbers in you just put a few fewer numbers in um just rearrange for the number of moles <clears throat> And we know that that's six, 0 0.2 times 10 to the um, 23. And it gives us 2.5 times 10 to the 4 moles. So this was just a simple question to show that you can use both equations. If you use this one instead of this one, then you can rearrange and put the numbers and you'll see that you'll get the same value if you place the power, uh, pressure, volume and uh, uh, temperature of it. Okay, so now at this point we're going to use two equations so that we can come to an expression that links the mean kinetic energy and temperature of an ideal gas together. And it's a very important part that we're going to reach now um, in this topic because it, uh, it will make uh, more sense uh, in terms of what is going on uh, with the atmosphere and what type of particles we have in the atmosphere. So we have two equations to use. Um, we will be using the uh, one that links the number of molecules and mass of each uh, uh, particle, sorry, together. And we're gonna use the one that we just uh, derived um, together. Since both expressions are um, PV, so we have both of these expressions are PV, I can equate them together because they will be equal to each other either way. Remember, it's just expressions that we can calculate pressure times volume in different ways. Um, so to begin with, we I'm just gonna equate them together. So here we can already see that we have the um, mean squared speed. We know that in general, we learned that kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So I can already see the mc squared um, in this part of the equation. N and N are constant, it doesn't change, so the number of um, uh, particles doesn't change in the system if we're talking about the same system. And we end up with a third mc squared is equal to kt. However, uh, we know that the equation of kinetic energy has a half as a factor in it, so I want to have an expression that looks like that. Hence what I will do so I'm going to rewrite this part as um, 2 over 3 times a half. What that is equal to is a third, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and so on. But I can rewrite it in this way so I can manipulate it. So it's going to be 3 over 2 times a half um, c squared is equal to kt. Now you can see that, um, sorry, two thirds. This is two thirds, I don't know why I wrote that. Now that you, now you can see that I um, just simply replaced the third with um, this expression, which is the same, it means exactly the same thing, a third, but now it looks more familiar. Now this expression here looks more like kinetic energy. And I will just rearrange this to have a half m c squared is equal to 3 over 2 kt. And we have the expression that we need. We have the expression that links the kinetic energy to temperature. And if I write it in, a, in another way, since this is kinetic energy, I have kinetic energy of uh, the average kinetic, so this is the average kinetic energy of gas particles 
uh, of a substance, then uh, it is equal to 3 over 2 Boltzmann constant times the absolute temperature, meaning in Kelvin. Um, so the average kinetic energy of particles is directly proportional to temperature. This is a constant. This is a constant number. They don't change. So the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature, and we have proved it with this equation. Um, before I continue on to explain why this is important or how we can use it, um, I wanted to remind you quickly what you are given and not given in the formula booklet. So you are given the expression um, that links pressure, volume, temperature to a number of particles, to the number of moles, um, to the number of particles, n mass of each particle in this case, and speed. Um, these are the two equations that you will have to use um, together to get this one, to prove it. <clears throat> this one links um, the mass and everything together as well. And then this expression is simply if you need to find the kinetic energy um, of gas particles, the average kinetic energy of gas particles at a specific temperature that the gas is in. Um, <clears throat> the ones that you're not given, I've listed them here. So you're not given um, the expressions that link the number of moles to number of particles or the molar mass to the number of uh, moles. Um, you're not given the individual expressions like what we've seen before that PV is constant or P over T is constant or that P of V over T is constant. But you should know them. Um, and you can even use that this expression, rearrange it, to remember that, because you will be dealing with the number, same, if you have, an, like, for example, the example questions we did in the previous chapter, it will make a bit more sense um, to re just rearrange and remember them. But it's not hard to remember. So going back now, uh, we saw now that the energy, kinetic energy of... Um, Particles, the average kinetic energy of particles in a gas is directly proportional to temperature, so it only relies uh, on the temperature. And um, for example, if I doubled the temperature, then the kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy of the particles, atoms, or molecules in a gas will double as well. Now, I have a little example here. <clears throat> it's giving me the mass of a helium atom. Um, and it tells me to calculate the room mean square speed of helium atoms in the gas at this temperature. So we have a half mc squared, which is 3 over 2 kT. Uh, I know the temperature, which should be in Kelvin, so that's 15 plus 273. 288 um, Kelvin. Uh, I just rearranged for C squared. So that will be 3 kT over M. Um, you get rid of 2 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And just place the values in. So you have 3 times uh, Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38, times 10 to the minus 23, is 288. So it's all about picking the correct equation based on the values that you do have. And if you don't have them, you might need to combine certain um, equations together as well. So do be aware of that. Um, and that will give us 1 point... Well, actually, that's not it yet. Uh, this is c squared, so this is the mean squared speed. Now, if I want to get the root mean squared speed, then I need to um, square root that expression. And I'm just going to do it quickly. This will give you 1.34 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. 
now um, you can see that this is quite a big uh, quite a high speed for a helium atom to have um, it's basically covering about 1.3 kilometers in one second um, so now we're going to go and explain where has all the helium gone in our atmosphere so in other words um, most of the universe contains a lot of helium atoms um, or ions um, on, in the Earth's atmosphere, however, we have very, very little um, helium. And um, it's a good point here to mention why that is. So um, most of the particles or atoms in the atmosphere, like um, oxygen molecules and helium atoms, they will all have the same average kinetic energy, even though they have different masses. So their average kinetic energy really depends on the temperature. So they will all have, whether they're um, oxygen molecules or helium atoms or nitrogen molecules, they will all have the same average kinetic energy. That's what this equation proved. Um, it doesn't depend on the mass at all. It depends on the temperature. However, um, as they do have different masses, their root mean squared speed will be different. So this value here will be different when we square root it, obviously. Um, so we will explain why that affects helium atoms differently. So since all of the oxygen, um, helium, nitrogen, carbon dioxide molecules, um, they all have the same kinetic energy average kinetic energy uh, which relies on the temperature only it doesn't mean that this expression can't change um, it, it can actually it means that if I have lower mass then the speed will be higher and that goes for helium because there's a um, helium has a very small mass which means higher root mean squared speed. And since they have much greater speeds, um, over time, these fast moving helium atoms will escape the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and since we already calculated the Earth's, uh, the, uh, um, sorry, the root mean squared speed of a helium atom, we saw that it was 1.3 kilometers per second. Um, for something to be able to escape the atmosphere, uh, the Earth, basically, it needs to be about 11 kilometers per second. Um, so over time, with temperature changes, so this was at 15 degrees Celsius, now imagine at 30 degrees Celsius, or um, if we're talking about, uh, yeah, hotter, weather or anything like that, then they will be able to escape um, easier. So that's why we have very little helium in the Earth's atmosphere, because they have a very small mass. We're lucky enough that um, oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide are quite uh, heavy for them to even reach um, escape velocity for the Earth. And the thing that I wanted to summarize back up now is the internal energy of an ideal gas. Um, I did mention this before in one of my lessons, in the first lesson, I think, of this topic. But just a reminder that the internal energy is the sum of random kinetic energies and potential energies in a system. This is very important. Randomly distributed, random kinetic energy and potential energies. Uh, but we did make an assumption, so yeah, it was in the first lesson I mentioned it, we did make an assumption that there are uh, no electrostatic forces between particles in an ideal gas, uh, except during collisions. So basically we're saying that there is no electrical potential energy in an ideal gas, so there is no potential energy at all, and all the internal energy is in the form of kinetic energy. That means that um, if I double the temperature, then I double the ideal gas's uh, 
kinetic energy, which means I'm doubling the internal energy. And this is why this equation, these two equations become very important. Uh, because we're saying that for an ideal gas, the internal energy only depends on the temperature of the ideal gas. If you have any questions, please do write them down and ask me in the lesson.